Hello everybody, Toronto here and welcome to episode 3 of the patch 1.49 roundup series. Now today we're going to look at the next two uh, dev blog articles but we're also going to have a quick look at the preliminary patch notes. Now I'm going to go through the dev blog articles first but, and then we'll do the patch notes. Now the first articles are about the Seafire FR47 and the Sea Fury FB11. Uh, it says here perhaps the most interesting aircraft we are adding to the British tree in the victory we weapons of victory update. Uh, the FR-47 with a unique contra-rotating propeller which neutralised the flow swirl effect uh, which is present in other single engine aircraft where stability and torque effect is not so critical and they're showing the FB-11 which is one of, the one of the fastest production piston aircraft in existence. Now it's going to be in tier 1 and it has four 20mm Mark V Hispano cannons. Uh, 120 rounds per barrel in the internal cannons and 110 in the external um, cannons. You can mount 500 pound bombs under each wing, so I'm assuming two 500 pound bombs, and possible to attach Mark 8 or Mark 9 rockets in twos or fours for each wing. Now you can see here some of the naval aspects like the um, hook and you, there you can see the cannons. Uh, it says here, final most highly rated model for the Seafire, and the main feature is the two coaxial propellers that rotate in different directions, and this will be the only aircraft with that propeller design at the moment. You can see it here in this picture, um, so one's rotating right and one's rotating left, presumably. Now we move on to the Seafire, uh, Seafire? Sea Fury FB-11. Um, again, armed with four 20mm Mark V Hispano cannons, and 145 rounds per barrel and it will it will be in tier 4, it will, it will close the fourth rank, so I assume that means it's in tier 4. Uh, maximum payload is up to £2,000, or 900 kilograms. You can mount bombs of £1,000 on each underwing pylon, either two £250 or two, and two £500 or two £1,000 bombs. Um, in fighter bomber mode, possible to load 12 3 inch guided rockets at, with £60 warheads. Um, you can see they're taking off from an aircraft carrier launching rockets. Uh, last piston engined fighter used in the Royal Naval Fleet Air Arm, uh, one of the fastest production pr piston aircraft ever built. Uh, could only be this aircraft that closes the full rank of um, carrier based aircraft and will be the last step before proceeding to carrier based fighter jets. Uh, here they just talk about how, um, you know, some of the design work and modelling about the um, cooling flaps and that they didn't have much information on it. Um, apparently it sort of works a bit differently um, to other aircraft from what I can read here. The link to this article will be in the description with the others if you want to read through it in more detail, of course. Um, but going back, we're going to move on to the planned aircraft structural improvements. Uh, so we'll click here. Uh, continue to work on improvements of aircraft damage model. Uh, transition for, for the calculation of structural strength of the aircraft from the simplified system to a more detailed one. As a result of the new system, you will see significant changes in the behaviour of aircraft and collisions, as well as during emergency landing. Uh, be more difficult to harm a heavy bomber by ramming it while flying a light aircraft, and the correct execution of the belly landing will damage the aircraft just slightly with the possibility to fully repair it and return to battle again. Uh, with the introduction of the new system in structural strength of aircraft, uh, they're also going to improve the module display. Uh, you'll be able to see the status of each module and each part of the aircraft while in battle. Therefore, you'll be able to determine the status of the vehicle much more accurately than ever before. Now, this seems to be the X-ray model. It seems to be a little bit different because um, it seems to be showing the whole wing. Um, they did have this in one of the dev servers for a previous patch, and it just showed the modules like engines, gunners fuel tanks, they didn't have like the whole wing, so they seem to have changed it a little bit there at least. Um, again I'll link you to this um, article so you can watch the videos and read in more detail. Now leaving the dev blog articles, we're on the preliminary patch notes for patch 1.49. Um, again they're not final, now I'll quickly give a quick read through them. The Americans are getting the Sky Raider and two P-51s, the P-51A and the D-10. Now the D-10, if I'm correct, is a premium. I'm not sure how you unlock it. I think a lot of these premiums you get in a bundle, but I don't know what the bundle is, so I can't really give too much information on that. Uh, the Russians are going to be getting the Yak-9M, uh, lots of old twos, the 1943, 1942 and the 1943 AM-38. Now I believe some of these are replacing existing models, so they're not necessarily all new aircraft. Uh, the Yak 9T and 9K are getting new models. The R28 is getting a cockpit, and we're getting the Dolgo Dolgashin's LA7, which is a again a um, premium. 
Germany's getting the Irado 234C3, which has four engines and 20mm cannons, uh, the BF109B, which is an early BF109, and the HS129 has got a cockpit. Now, Britain seems to have got the most um, aircraft. We've got the Firefly Mark I and Mark V, Seafire Mark uh, 17, I believe that is, uh, the FR-47, and the um, Sea Fury FB-11, Attacker FB-1, Canberra's getting a cockpit, Sea Gladiator Mark I, Sea Hurricane Mark I-B and Mark I-C, and two premiums, uh, Plagisys um, Spitfire LF Mark IX and Pentagrass Spitfire Mark XIV-E. Japan's getting some new vehicles as well, or aircraft, the J2M2 and the Ki-21 light bomber, or medium bomber. Now, in ground forces, it's America and Russia are getting the most of the um, new vehicles. Uh, America's getting its ta tank destroyer line, the M2A2, which is it's actually a vehicle armed with machine guns, but it's the start of the tank destroyer line. Uh, 75mm M3 GMC, the half-track we looked at before, M18 GMC, or the Hellcat, T95, which I believe is the new uh, tank destroyer at tier 5, and the T28, which I believe is the premium, or it may be the other way around, but they're basically the same vehicle, it's just one has two tracks and one has four. Um, also the M10 GMC, otherwise known as the Wolverine, M18 Black Cat, which is a premium, and the M8, M5A1 Fifth Armoured Division, I think that's a Canadian division, um, which is a, again a premium, I believe. Germany's getting the Stur 42G, which is a Stug G with a 105mm cannon, or howitzer. Um, Russia's getting the 4M Gaz AAA, basically a truck with four Maxim machine guns, which fires ridiculously fast. Uh, the Su-57, again, I think that's a premium. It's a half-track with a 57mm gun. Uh, the Su-122-54, which is a T-54 with a 122mm um, gun. T-34-85E and the T-34-E-STZ. The 85E, I believe, is a premium, and the STZ is in the normal tech tree. Uh, the IS-2 Avenger and the Su-76M um, are also premiums. So that's all the aircraft and tanks. Um, we've got three new uh, maps, Berlin, Normandy and Hertgen. Berlin's going to be available for domination, battle and capture. Uh, Normandy for domination, battle, breakthrough and capture. And Hertgen Forest, uh, domination, battle and capture. Also been some changes to ground forces maps. Uh, Poland, a rocky ledge on the northeastern area of the lake has been added. Uh, minor balance changes. Many changes have been t taken place on this location. Uh, for better gameplay balance, new heels and covers have been added. Riverbed has been reworked. Uh, daily awards interface has been changed, uh, uh, leaving the maps of sec. Um, format of information regarding damage to enemy vehicles has been changed. Uh, I did see that a little bit in the um, uh, test server. I don't know what to make of it so far. Um, penetration characteristics of armor piercing APCR shells have been changed. Penetration of all shells is now calculated for a single method. Almost all the shells can penetra now penetrate thicker non-sloped armour than before, but are, less, are considerably less effective against sloped armour. Armour-piercing projectiles, projectiles of all types now show the worst performance regarding the penetration of sloped armour. Uh, amount taken that it takes for a fuel tank fire to cause an explosion has been changed. Uh, a set amount of time, 10 to 15 seconds before, or it will take a certain amount of time before ammunition and fuel tanks may detonate from a fire in other modules. After this time has lapsed, the chance of ammunition or um, fuel tank explosion is higher than previously than it previously was in 1.47. Um, I can see when I made that change, I've had situations where I've been set on fire and just sat there for like two or three minutes before I exploded, so I suppose that explains why that's been changed. Um, high explosive shells that were not tracer shells in reality no, no, no longer show a tracer effect in game. Uh, 122 mm high explosive shells of the D25T uh, using a reduced uh, propellant charge instead of a full charge, resulting in a muzzle velocity of 570 meters a second and a steeper traje trajectory. I don't know why they've changed that. I don't know if that's a historical thing. Um, I would have thought you'd use a full charge if you're launching a projectile or something, but maybe that's how it was used historically, though it doesn't really seem to make sense for me. Uh, muzzle velocity of the 90mm AP shells for the M36 and M30A1 cannons have been changed to 912m a second. Muzzle velocity of German 75mm cannons with a barrel length of 43, 48, 46 calibers have been changed. Uh, maximum muzzle velocity is now featured by the Pac 40 self propelled gun Marder 3. 
Visual effects of hits into the ground and on vehicles by projectiles with thermal caliber we- rounds have been reduced. Um, other changes and fixes to ground vehicles. Uh, the thickness of the upper frontal arm of the M4A3 E2 with 75mm and 76mm cannons has gone from 25.4cm or 10 inches to 63.5 or 25 inches. That's a bloody big increase. I don't know why they've done that. I don't know if that was how it was his- historically, but that's a massive increase. I- I don't know how that's going to affect things in game. Uh, ammunition load of the Panzer III N, which is a premium, with the it's a Panzer III of the 75 millimeter uh, short barrel um, 75 millimeter gun, uh, has been changed from 56 to 64 shells. Uh, rotation speed of the Tiger One H H one's um, turret's been increased from 7.5 degrees a second to 12 degrees, and from the Tiger One E from 7.5 to 14. Uh, characteristics of the T-35 have been updated, thickness of armour plates, uh, the entire mass, um, tank's entire mass and the main turret rotation speed have been fixed, uh, according to a bug report from Nikon D3X. I don't know if that means it's better or worse, it doesn't actually say what they've changed, like how they've changed it. Um, ammunition load has been changed for self-propelled guns, IS-122, uh, ISU-122S and all modifications of the T-54. Again, I don't know if that means an increase, a decrease, or if they've just moved where the ammunition is stored or something. Uh, time to change magazine on the M16 self-propelled anti-aircraft has been increased to 14 seconds. Uh, well, we know that's an increase, so presumably that makes it a bit worse. Uh, a bug on multi-turret vehicles which allowed the continuous rotation of the turrets after drive mechanisms have been destroyed has been fixed. And the ammunition load out of the M41A1 has been changed from 57 to 67 to 65 shots and we've got a lot of um, decals for ground forces um, I'm not going to read through all of them because that will take forever uh, so a few changes to flight modes I'm not going to go through all of them uh, because there's so many there but it's, you know we'll be here forever if I go through all of them but you know I'll link you to the um, patch notes so you can read through them uh, M1919 A4 tank machine gun sound have been updated, same for the uh, DT machine guns and opening and closing of the cockpit while flying will result in a more noticeable sound difference. So that's it for today's episode, uh, sorry it's a bit short but there isn't really much else to add. Um, you know so far the patch does seem to be shaping up quite nicely. I'd definitely be interested to see how the um, air damage model and aircraft structural improvements go. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to the American tank destroyers and the fleet air arm. I've uh, been waiting for them for a long time, especially with the fleet air arm. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Leave a like if you did like the episode. Um, subscribe if you like these sorts of videos. Uh, leave feedback, could always do with more feedback. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.